I will never forget where I was the day you called and said that you had got let go from the radio station. It's probably even more etched in your mind if I can't yeah, remember literally bit. where I was standing yeah. when I got the call. I think it shows how we were both caught off guard. <laughs> we're Super caught off guard. Yeah. <laughs> Super caught off guard. And then, you know, this last small group we were in at church, uh, we met someone who had just like unexpectedly been like let go by her closest friends. Mm -hmm. you like they would vacation together and then she like totally got ghosted by them yeah and she still would cry yeah talking about oh, it yeah and there was another gal who had been let go of her job of 20 plus years mm -hmm. and she thought she was part of the su succession plan oh yeah and it being passed on to the kids and then they like just cleaned house right and we're walking with a really dear friend who is going through a divorce that she never wanted and so these things i mean mm -hmm. i feel like in this is life Right. All yes. of us at one time or another or yeah. multiple times, unfortunately, yeah. are going to experience losses and where we're on, you know, the side where it doesn't feel like we can do much about it or yes, like right. the other person can even resolve it for us. They, the other person has all the control in it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So today let's talk about forgiveness. We're going to reference Lisa Turker's book, which is awesome. And I think we have some good tools. And I think forgiveness is so tricky because... Well, it always takes longer than you think it should. Oh, yes. It takes a lot of emotional energy. Mm -hmm. And then you think you're doing well. Yeah. And you are driving toward the perimeter of where the radio station signal gets to. <laughs> and you're like, do I turn it on or do I not turn it on? Right. And then you're like, but you have to, right? Yeah. Kind of like checking in on that person on Facebook oh, or Instagram. Yeah, you stop and you're like, words. do I or don't I? And then you do. And then you're like ha, they're still using old liners because nobody knows how to do what I did. And, <laughs> and like you, but you don't really feel better. No. Or you turn it on and it's like, better. Oh, they're doing yeah. great. Oh, no. Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. And so none of it helps. And I would add to it too that um, generally the people around you don't understand. That was another thing. I mean, I remember it was like six months after and you and Tom were like, wow, didn't this work out for the best? What's Don? next? Don? You wanted to be the yeah. stay-at-home mom. Like, wow, God really worked that yeah. out. And meanwhile, I am still literally waking up in the middle of the night thinking about the things I should have said in that meeting, Yeah, you know? And so, and then when you're actually in it, all the things people say about forgiveness are like so worthless. You're like, if I hear that one more time, like, please just stop. So none of it's even helpful. And then you're just left there being like, I don't know what to do. Right. But I don't want to be this way. And I'm not, I'm not supposed to hang on to this. And you have to like knock on all these doors. Even our mom went through this recently until someone can respond in the right way. You almost yeah. have to go to someone new at, at six months and be like, will you just listen to me and validate and yes. not fix? Right. Yeah. And so we validate right now. Oh, yeah. It is so hard. Mm -hmm. It is so hard. I, a loss of a marriage, I think, is a huge one. That's years. Oh, that's yeah. effects on if there's kids then and yeah. like and memories and just so many things. And so uh, Lisa's book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. I, I think one of the things that's so helpful about it is she uses her own personal stories mm -hmm. and she talks about like getting triggered and like slamming the door over and over again and like having a meltdown and then like the delivery person showed up <laughs> and she's like busted in this moment um but I think like her authenticity helps mm -hmm. us to really relate to the process but again if no one else can validate you in it at least you, you know maybe you're like well at least I'm not standing and screaming at my front door like maybe I'm doing okay right right <laughs> but there's also such useful tips as yes. well and mm -hmm. so one of the big things that Lisa talks about is if we are going to take full ownership of this process and and she says you know there were points i actually wasn't ready to forgive mm -hmm. but she knew enough to get herself into counseling and so her counselor was helping her to walk through this process and one of the main things that she did was actually look back over the different losses or offenses or hurts in her life and she calls it you collect the dots and then you connect the dots looking at what what beliefs did I take on about myself in those moments? Yeah. And then these become, you can look at them as your shame scripts. Yeah. First and foremost, I was reading this and I was like, 
that sounds exhausting <laughs> and oh, hard. Right. Yeah. And hard. And still all about me and not actually getting retribution. From yeah. The and like my, especially <laughs> my personality is like, I just want to move forward. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want this to be my story. Let's just figure out how to move forward, yeah. you know? And so, however, she talked about how when her husband and, and she did this together, they saw that their shame scripts were actually bumping into each other mm -hmm. because she over time had developed this mindset of don't ask too much of people. Mm -hmm. They're just going to let you down or not protect you anyway mm -hmm. and he had a performance driven mindset of I'm never enough yeah. and so she would not ask enough he'd be like hey can I help you with this and she'd be like well I don't want to ask too much no it's okay I got it and then he's like right because I'm not going to do a good enough job anyway yeah and I know right it seems kind of exhausting oh however yeah. <laughs> it's a gift it's a right. gift I think if we can start to connect these dots in our lives and and as I was just kind of like digging into that and thinking about it I was like Oh, shoot. I can probably think of a <laughs> yeah. pattern or two in my yeah. own life over time. I mean, that's what, I mean, it's the rejection. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, when someone is choosing whatever they did, I mean, how can we not take that personally? That's yeah. what it all is. We're not saying like, oh, they're a hurting person, hurting people. It's like, no, it's me. It's me. Yeah. And there's a really great other book called The Supernatural Power of Forgiveness um, that I also would highly recommend. And uh, um, the author talks about how shame is like this kind of like cloak that we take on to like show that we know we're not good enough and we know that we've made this mistakes or we're broken and we start to kind of wear that. And then again, to start to recognize this. And I remember a moment I was reading that book and I felt like the Lord was like, nope, we're done with that. And it was like a physical weight was lifted off of my shoulders. Wow. I can't even believe that. Mm -hmm. So I recommend that book as well. And I think that highlights the point too, that there is so much grace in this process. Mm -hmm. And so if we can like muster up the emotional energy that it takes, the Lord will meet us there. And I think that's one of the great promises in this whole process. And I think one of the other things I really took away from that book, and if you all know Lisa Turkhurst, like I, what I really appreciated about the book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget, is that it wasn't like, you're a Christian, so therefore you are called to forgive and now you need to forgive. Like it really was not like that at all. Like she walked us through a very personal process and it it felt very doable, like the steps that she took you through. In that mindset, her uh, she was in like a group counseling therapy thing and other people use different coping mechanisms, alcohol, oh, right. yeah. Netflix, yeah. food, other relationships to yeah. cope. And she was like sitting there with her Bible. She's like, well, at least I'm not doing that. And so the facilitator actually called her out for hyper spiritualizing <laughs> because she was just like, well, God's going to make good. It's going to work out in my favor. Yeah. Like I just have to forgive and move on. And right, so that right. actually, um, I think many of us have yeah. been there. It oh, doesn't yeah. work. We try like, because you know, this really good advice where it's just like, Hey, just pray for the person. Yeah. And then your heart will soften toward them and it'll be easier to forgive. Yeah doesn't always work that way. No. So, I mean, I think that's a good thing it to might do. It's a piece of the puzzle. It's a piece of the puzzle, yes. but we don't have to rush to that. There's permission to actually feel the pain, to yeah. say, this has cost me a lot, which I think is what you're going to get to next. Right. And so I think we've often had the experience where it's like, I thought I forgave them. Yeah. I thought I forgave, you know, the people that had hurt me at this last job. But then you realize you didn't get invited to the grad party of your coworker. What do they have against me? Why can't I still go to the grad yeah. party? You know, and I'm like, it's two years later and now I'm feeling upset. And then I'm like frustrated with myself because I'm like, I really thought I had moved on. This shouldn't bother me. Yeah. And so I really appreciate that she says like you have the original offense, but then you have that like ripple effect of all the different ways that it's going to impact your life that you didn't see when the initial thing happened. Yeah. And so that there is going to be more opportunities to forgive, but it doesn't mean that you haven't done the work or you haven't forgave them for the original offense. It's just that, oh, good, <laughs> there's going to be more opportunities <laughs> to forgive. <laughs> and isn't this the part that is frustrating, exhausting, and where maybe even the people around you are like, oh, really? Oh, seriously? Like we're talking about this again? Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought you were a Christian. Like, right. you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, time somebody does. <laughs> I was driving to a birthday party this winter and I was anticipating seeing some people where we had had a falling out. Um, again, I didn't fully understand it myself. And, but I was like, I think I'm going to, I was talking to you. I was like, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to see these people. And that's where you shared that truth of like, cause I was like, 
why is this so hard? Like yeah. we've all, this has been years. We've all moved forward in life. Right. And you know, like I have good things to share. And, and then that idea that like, yeah, we just have to keep forgiving because yeah. this hurts. Like this is uncomfortable. This mm -hmm. hurts. This is sad. It's a loss. Yeah. It's a loss of relationship. And so that's okay. Yeah. Yep. And I think another big thing I've learned through this process too, is that we do need other people to listen and validate not to fix. There's nothing they can do to correct it. And I don't even need that. Right. I just need someone to humanize like what it is that I'm going through. say, yeah, wow, that is really hard. Like yeah. that would be hard to go to a birthday party now where you're, you're not sure if you're going to see them. Right. You're like, you're yeah. the worst. And then they might not even be there. <laughs> right? Like rehearsing what you're going to say yeah. in your head. Yeah. And so it is so important that we find someone that we can trust in this. And it, it stinks when it's not the people we would hope it would be. Like, maybe it's not the great. She didn't mean it like, well, okay, you kind yeah. of meant it. Yeah. No, I mean, you're, <laughs> yeah, I wish everyone had a built-in twin sister or best friend, you know. But um, it might not be the person we thought. Or maybe we've learned, I can't count on my best friend in for that. But I do pray, like, for you that the Lord will bring someone in your path mm -hmm. that is safe to share this with, who has the gift of validation <laughs> yeah. that can help you. Because that is so powerful. I mean, yeah. if, if no one is acknowledging it, we can read the books and we can do that. But I still think there is this piece of just needing someone to help us yep. like to be able to talk it out. And you. sometimes that is a pastor or a counselor, you know, mm -hmm. if, um, and Lisa's a big proponent of like Christian counseling, you know, so looking for, yeah, if they're not in your immediate inner circle right now, or they fail the test, <laughs> and then there's other resources that can be available to you, yeah. but definitely pray for that person. We've talked about this with friendships, with good neighbors, with, oh, whatever that person to come into your I'm life. Sorry. I thought yeah. we were back to praying. Yeah, no, 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 no. like, ugh. Ask the Lord to bring someone into your yeah. life with a good listening ear. Yes. Yeah. And we've seen him be so faithful in that. And so I want to close with some encouragement. And I think what's so validating about this passage in scripture, uh, Jesus is telling a parable and he's likening forgiveness to a debt system. And what's so significant about that is it's validating. So even right here in the, the scriptures, it's validating there is a loss and there is a cost to the pain that was caused and nothing can be done about that. Like, even if you like have a best case scenario and the person comes back to you and they're repentant and you can even restore the relationship, there still was a hurt. And in that there still was a loss and there was an effect. And so I think that's what's so compassionate in this, um, in this parable is that Jesus is, validating that mm -hmm. and so know too that even even god isn't sitting there thinking move on yeah you're a christian you know that you can even if there is no other person even right now that can hear you that the lord actually sincerely cares and does empathize with you so this is the parable of the unmerciful servant it's in matthew 18 and it starts in verse 21 i'll kind of paraphrase it's a little bit long um, it's talking about Jesus saying the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And basically he found that one of his servants had been embezzling over the last seven years to the amount of over a billion dollars. <laughs> like, how did we not catch this sooner? Right. right. You would think, you know, a king would have a, a solid accountant on his side. And so he brought that servant in. And since the servant was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children be put into debtor's prison. What a time to live in, right? And so the servant fell on his knees. Like, we just get annoying calls. <laughs> we, our family doesn't go to debtor's prison. Uh, the servant fell on his knees before him and said, be patient with me and I will pay back everything. I mean, this is a joke, right? He, I mean, he can't possibly pay back over a billion dollars in his lifetime. Or I think it's seven billion, just, just to make this really clear. Okay. And so the master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. And so the picture that we see in this is the cost of our salvation. Each one of us is in a place where we cannot possibly repay for our sinfulness, for our choices that we make, and for our natural sin that we're born with. And so first and foremost, Jesus wants us to see that we actually all have been recipients of this type of mercy in our lives. And what a gift. But, gosh, 
Then the servant goes out from there and he finds someone who owed him a hundred denarii. So that would be like a hundred days wages. And so several thousand dollars. So it's still a lot, but it would definitely be manageable if you set up maybe a payment system over time. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw this, they were distressed and told the king what had happened. The master called the servant in and said, you wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers uh, until he would pay back all that would be owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. So again, don't hear an admonition here and be like, see, you were forgiven of so much. Now you got to just go and forgive as if it's simple. You know, this a uh, hundred days wages, like that is still a debt. That is still, again, something that was done to you. It was pain, it was hurt, it was loss. And so that's not an insignificant amount. But there's encouragement here that when we come to Jesus with our hurt and our pain and our loss, that there's grace. That again, he understands, but in him, we are gonna have the courage and the strength to extend the forgiveness that we need to forgive. And there's so many reasons, we're gonna wrap up, but there's so many reasons. Unforgiveness, it affects our health. Yeah. It affects our relationships that we're in right now. It affects our future relationships because do you know how like after you've been hurt, then you're always like looking around like, well, are you gonna do this? You know, even a new person, are you gonna do yeah. this to me again? It has a huge ripple effect. And again, it can even affect our physical health, our sleep, so many things. And so even if we have no other, we don't have enough strength for anything else today, but to just to say to Jesus, I need your help. I want to forgive. I don't want to be locked in bitterness. I don't want to be locked in this pain. This other person still has power over me because I'm staying here. Will you please help me? And even if that's just a prayer that you pray every day until you can take more steps, or maybe you pick up this book, you know, and you know, you're like, well, I'm at least going to hear her story and I'm going to hear some of the tips or, you know, you read this passage over and over until you're like, wow, Lord, you did so much for me. <laughs> like, and you know, help that to sink in. So then I can start to extend this grace as well. Those are just some practical steps we can take today to unlock ourselves from that prison. So Father, I thank you. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for these resources. And I thank you for your amazing and abundant grace. Jesus, that you came and walked this earth. You were betrayed. And even on the cross, you were extending forgiveness. And so Lord, you know, you empathize with us. You understand that there is a debt that cannot be repaid, but that ultimately we can extend mercy to free each one of us. And so, Father, I just again ask for your grace. I ask for listening ears, and I ask that your Holy Spirit would be with us. And I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.